team, you may now begin your presentation. In 2004, Site Ryerson had less than 20 members, and our first project was selling Red Bull out of our mini fridge. Only five years later, Site Ryerson has 124 active members. We have run over 47 projects. We have helped start and expand 27 new and existing businesses. And we have impacted over 4,000 individuals. Extended our reach to 61 countries. And have a support network of 53 organizations. Site Ryerson has created over $3.3 million in new economic opportunities. Site Ryerson is turning ideas into reality. Hello, my name is Ian, Start Me Up Coordinator. Hi, I'm Tracy, VP Marketing and Incoming President for Site Ryerson. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alexandra, Director of Sage Canada. My name is Rohan Sharma, and I am the President of Site Ryerson. And I'm Jonathan, the Creative Director. Join us in tech and design. We have Mackenzie and Amir. Two years ago, Site Ryerson created REI, the Ryerson Entrepreneur Institute, the only student-run entrepreneurship center in Canada. This year, REI was awarded the Urban Canadian Leadership Award for having the most significant impact on a Canadian city's economic prosperity. On behalf of the CEO, I'd like to congratulate Site Ryerson for REI winning the Canadian Urban Institute's Urban Leadership Award for Prosperity. What this does is it talks about the city's capacity to generate wealth and enable its people to benefit from the strength of the Institute in Toronto. This year, Site Ryerson has run over 47 projects under seven major programs. Each program allows us to utilize our resources to target a variety of audiences to turn their ideas into reality. All of the results that you will see in today's presentation were achieved this year. The relevant site criteria will be shown at the top left corner of the screen. Today, we will showcase seven of our most impactful initiatives. We begin with our newest project, the Digital Media Zone. Oh, I was at the opening of what Ryerson calls its Digital Media Zone. It's a special place for young entrepreneurs at the university who have an idea for a new website or a mobile application or a digital innovation. They just need some help making it a reality. <laughs> From its spot high above Young Dundas Square, Ryerson University has high hopes for its new digital media zone. It's a flexible space for students to do research or start up businesses. How can you tell this isn't a stuffy classroom? The beanbag chairs. That's what students are doing. From gloves that help you feel your way around virtual reality. They will provide haptic feedback. To programs that help you experience augmented reality. In the three months the center has been open, four companies have started up, like this one, hoping to revolutionize interactive advertising. In Canada, there are a lack of resources to help start and grow digital media startups. To keep innovation within our country, the Ryerson Digital Media Zone was developed. Syph Ryerson has turned the zone from an idea into a reality. We run the day-to-day -day operations of this 6,000 square foot space, which include its office management, business development activities, and marketing support. And for each of the participants within the zone, we provide access to industry professionals and fully funded support services. For example, you come to us with an idea for a mobile application, but you don't know how to get it off the ground. So we provide you with whatever services you need, whether it's web development, graphic design, or even market analysis. In only three months, we have over 50 participants collaborating on 25 projects and have helped start up four new companies. The Digital Media Zone is advancing Canadian innovation by helping digital media startups turn their ideas into reality. To help others succeed as entrepreneurs, we run Start Me Up Ryerson, which starts and grows new and existing businesses. This comprehensive four-stage program includes events, idea consultations, resources, and then funding. We consistently build on these four stages in order to target a variety of audiences and customize a program for each and every one of our participants. We'd like to introduce you to Chris and Latham and their journey with us through the Start Me Up program.
My experience was great. We were provided with the resources we needed to supplement the toolbox that we were developing. Without starting at Ryerson, we wouldn't be in the position we are today. We wouldn't have launched our company successfully. Start Me Up helped me to refine my idea, to test my market, to secure funding, to launch my company, and to provide the support services I need afterwards. Thank you, Start Me Up Ryerson. While working at the Career Center at Ryerson, Chris saw firsthand the issues that students were having finding internships. Chris and Latham both decided to create an online recruitment tool that would help students get the internships that they wanted. Like all participants, they first attended an idea consultation, where they pitched their idea to a panel of industry professionals. But they asked tough questions that never crossed their mind. While this was a harsh reality, it showed them the obstacles that they would be facing and several solutions to pursue. So we sat them down and created a plan to address all of their issues. The first part of this plan was to get feedback from their target audience. So Chris and Latham spoke to literally hundreds of students at Y Market, our market testing event. They then needed some legal advice. So we partnered with Gallings, a top tier law firm, to answer all of Chris and Latham's questions. In March of this year, after months of hard work, we were proud to host the launch party of Chris and Latham's brand new business, Fanfare. They are both currently working in our digital media zone, and two of our members are dedicated to providing them with marketing services. And like all entrepreneurs, they needed cash. So they entered two of our business line competitions. On top of that, we connected them with a $12,000 loan from the Ontario Centers of Excellence, and Fanfare is currently in a $50,000 in due diligence process for equity investment within their company from our Ryerson Angel Network. We helped Chris and Latham turn their idea into the reality of fanfare. Another up and comer this year is Haley Coleman, who started the business called Dan Heels. Her products are portable, fold up flat shoes designed for women to wear after a long night out in their high heels. It's been a long process, and I've been watching the Slate Business Plan competition uh, since my first year at Ryerson. Um, I actually went to one of the idea consultations with Sean and he told me to stop thinking about it and actually get working on it. And I did, and here I am today. So, thank you. After attending our idea consultation and utilizing our resources, she has won two of our business plan competitions, giving her $32,000 in funding. Since then, she has received PR in over 20 publications, and her products can be found online and in retail stores. Steph Ryerson has helped Haley turn her idea into the reality of Dan Heels. But Chris, Nathan, and Haley are only three of the 68 participants we have going through the Start Me Up program. Each has their own story about how Steph Ryerson has helped them out. Uh, my name is Amanda Parker. I am the co-founder and editor-in-chief of the Commerce Times. For a little company called Imageworks that got our start here is one of the first companies to really uh, bring their idea to life in this place. Uh, my name is Emma Tresswell. I'm a Ryerson kind of student and fashion lifestyle magazine. The student coordinators are excellent. They actually do care that you get whatever you want to do off the ground. So we have a great opportunity to get all these resources while in school. I think the coolest part was that I didn't really have to approach Scythe. Scythe came to me. Very fluid and very fun. It's great. I mean, it's, it's priceless. <laughs> uh, we couldn't have done it really without the resources that start me out in Scythe Friars and provided. To have a global impact, this year we brought our Start Me Up program to Telawada, Egypt to help the Ibrahims family run by a 65-year-old single mother with nine children. In this town of 2,000 people, this family is impoverished. Their income depends on their farm, which makes less than $100 a month, signifying extreme poverty. And we wanted to make the Ibrahim's lifestyle sustainable. We first consulted with the family and decided that a chicken barn would be the most suitable business, since this will increase their monthly income to $1,500. The barn will be built this summer and employing 15 local workers. We discovered that the bird flu was a major problem in Talawana. So to customize our resources, we researched tips and tricks on how to keep their stock flu-free and translated it into Arabic. We also created a plan for them on how to run and operate a chicken ranch 
And finally, we ran a buy brick fundraiser, which sold virtual bricks for $2 each. A staff member in our entrepreneurship faculty is currently visiting the Ibrahims in Talawana to discuss the details and provide them with all of our resources. We are helping the Ibrahims turn their idea of a sustainable lifestyle into reality. Start, we have targets a variety of audiences. In addition to Telawana Egypt, we also target First Nations people. For this year, one of the participants even brought our program back to their native reserve. But not only has First Nations people adopted our program, but it continues to have success, where Duville College in Buffalo and Lakehead University has also adopted our Start Me Up program. And next year, Start Me Up will help the residents of Toronto Community Housing, the largest social housing provider in Canada. Our Start Me Up program runs 16 projects, with the Digital Media Zone only being one of them. This year, we've helped start and expand 27 new and existing businesses. We have impacted 2,200 individuals. And by giving our entrepreneurs grants, loans, and helping them generate revenue, we have created over $106,000 in new economic opportunity. We are helping entrepreneurs turn their ideas into reality. Our next audience are angel investors. High net worth individuals who invest their own money into new and existing businesses. So we founded and managed the Ryerson Angel Network, RAM. It is the only university-based angel investment group in Canada, so naturally it focuses on youth led business. This year, RAM grew to 33 angels and invested $160,000. Along with the National Angel Capital Organization, we co-hosted the Co-Investment Summit which brought together over 200 angels from across Canada. To assess their needs, we conducted over 40 private interviews where we learned that through the good times and the bad, that trust means everything, and that if there's no trust, there is no deal. But even though trust and ethics plays an essential role in investing, there was no formal process. So we developed investing ethics. Investing Ethically is an ethical screening process that is used to assess the entrepreneur during the due diligence process. The entrepreneur is looked at through the four dimensions of trust, which includes their ethics, competence, character, and honesty. This year, we're proud to announce that the National Angel Capital Organization will publish Investing Ethically in Age of the Angel, their best practices guide that is distributed to over 500 angels across Canada. Here's what Dan Mothersill, president of the NACO, had to say. Thank you, Simon Ryerson, for your outstanding work and your involvement with the National Angel Capital Organization in making a true difference in terms of ethical investing for both angels and for entrepreneurs. We helped turn the idea of enhancing the ethical investment process into reality. Our next audience are clean technology companies. Their technology makes the world a greener place. So we develop customized informatic solutions to provide them with market reports to further their reach. Last year, we piloted our project with Region Energy. Their technology saves other companies money by reducing energy consumption. Here's what the CEO had to say. Hi, I'm Mark Herbel. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Regen Energy. I want to thank Sally Frierson, uh, especially for the CIS uh, project that they enabled for us. Um, this has led, hopefully, to the potential creation of roughly 1.7 million in addition with funding and further sales for them. Of the 1.7 million dollars projected, this year, Regen Energy has generated over 1.1 million dollars in new revenues. Also new this year, we worked with Armin from Zalantech, a clean tech firm that develops and integrates smart water metering solution. Here's what Armin has to say about our program. Sam Ferguson has been integral to our growth and also to our development, uh, Zalantech. Uh, we had uh, Sam Ferguson give us market research, competitive analysis, they've given us uh, a, another perspective on how we look at the business, so we're very appreciative of uh, through CIS, Zellentech projects over $2 million in funding. To help even more companies, we've implemented an online solution 
that scans millions of data streams and creates online, affordable, up-to-date reports that is customized to the needs of each business. By expanding reach and energy in Zellin Tech's distribution channels, we are turning the idea of an environmentally sustainable economy into reality. For our next program, we focused on a global audience. We recognize that individuals lack motivation to make personal, environmentally sustainable decisions. So along with our partners, we ran the BlackBerry Green Application Challenge. We wanted to turn every BlackBerry into a sustainability tool. We accepted applications that helped you track your commute to work, or even saw how much you saved by turning off your lights. In just one week, the winner will be announced in the digital media zone. The winning application will be developed by RIM, receive $10,000, and be distributed to 50 million BlackBerry users through the app world. Imagine the environmental and economic impact of converting even a fraction of these smartphone devices into sustainability tools. We are turning the idea of individual green acts into the reality of global sustainability. In today's ever-changing economy, we realize that the lack of financial education is a widespread problem. So we developed Start Smart. It teaches financial literacy to a variety of audiences through success skills, market economics, and financial literacy. Even though Ryerson University is located in the central business area in Toronto, we are adjacent to the Regent Park area, where 68% of the people live below the poverty line. And directly across from our campus is Covenant House, the largest homeless youth shelter in Canada. We took an active role within the center, preparing members for a financially successful future. We also discovered that many of the youth wanted to pursue their education, but were working full-time jobs to financially support themselves. So we taught them time management on how to successfully balance work and school. We also, these seminars inspired the youth to set financial goals, save money, and go back to school. Danielle, program director at Covenant House, noticed that change. One of the big changes that we saw was an increase in uh, youth wanting to pursue their opportunities for education. When you're a youth who's homeless on the street, it's really impossible to think about uh, yourself in college or university. But the information that they were able to obtain from the Start Smart program really allowed them to start to dream and to consider themselves going to school, and that made us all very happy. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to Start Smart. We really have benefited from your involvement, and we look forward to a continued relationship. Another new audience we worked with this year were the teenage mothers at Rosali Hall. We learned that these mothers struggled to provide food and shelter for their children. So we taught them how to properly save and prepare for future expenses. For example, the young mothers were overspending on processed baby food. So we taught them the financial benefits of preparing their own. Start Smart helped me in a lot of ways, also to prioritize budget, save money, and see the changes that this program is bringing to these young girls. Their futures are becoming better, whether we had to spend money, whether we had to save money, but actually saving it and keeping it saved for something important in life. Thank you, Start Smart. You guys helped me a lot. Start Smart, thank you so much for developing this new program, and I know that these girls are going to benefit from it. More importantly, their children are going to benefit from it. And for that, you should be very proud. Within the first week of the teenage mothers going through our Start Smart program, they saved over $400. And by our seventh visit, eight of the young mothers opened up savings accounts. One of them even saved enough to move out of the center. But teenage mothers and homeless youths are only two of the 15 audiences we work with. We also work with at-risk youth, mainstream high school students, and university students. Start Smart is currently in its second year of a five-year plan to expand into 50 institutions. Next year, the Toronto District School Board has given us over $9,000 to expand into nine additional schools. And last night, we were named the HSBC Scythe Financial Education National Champions. This year, Star Smart has expanded their seminars from 36 to 73, 
We have increased the number of participants from 360 to 604. And by helping our participants save their money, we're putting them on the path to financial independence. We are turning the idea of financially secure futures into reality. For our final program, we want to give high school students the same incredible entrepreneurial experience that we get here as site members. So we founded the Canadian chapter of SAGE, Students for the Advancement of Global Entrepreneurship. SAGE is like SITE, but for high school students. Schools form teams to represent their school, and they create projects and pro programs and projects that fulfill judging criteria. Just like ACE, we recruit schools, provide mentorship, and host a regional and national competition. As director of SAGE Canada, it was amazing to see the amount of impact that each of the schools were having within their community. For example, George Vandy Secondary School ran and operated their very own business, selling products that they found were needed within the community. As well, they ran many charity events, such as sports tournaments and dance competitions, and they even ran their own Canadian Idol. And finally, they started running their own financial seminars. This year, Sage Canada has grown from three to eight schools. We officially expanded outside Ontario when we recruited our first school in Vancouver. And we just got back from visiting the team where we discussed future plans of expansion within the province. We are empowering students to embrace entrepreneurship and impact their fellow's peers. You can be sure to, you'll see these students standing exactly where we are today. This year, we involved over 140 high school students who have impacted over 1,200 individuals. And these high school students have created over $28,000 in new economic opportunity. We are growing the next generation of leaders. These students are putting theory into practice. Impacting their schools and the community. By creating this national platform, we are empowering high school students to turn your ideas into reality. Scythe Ryerson continues to turn ideas into reality, as we also ran 118 events. Like the Mystique Fashion Show, which brought fashion students together to showcase their product, network with industry professionals, and motivate them to start their own business. As well as Devil Camp Toronto, who has brought in over 500 tech entrepreneurs, where they were able to collaborate on new and cutting edge ideas. We also ran the Are You Green Challenge, which motivates individuals to look at their personal sustainability. This year, Are You Green expanded out to over 60 countries, and as a group, we saved over 1,400 hours of kilowatt hours of electricity and saved over 126,000 liters of water. Our sustainability is acknowledged. With Ryerson University entrusting us with the largest initiatives, including the Ryerson Entrepreneur Institute and the Digital Media Zone, our strategies for sustainability ensures that we continue to expand and have fun. Our member development program includes one-on-one -on -one mentorships, step-up nights, and personalized development plans. To achieve deadlines and milestones, we use project management software. This year, Pass Life members came back and formed the Alumni Network. We have the support of our business advisory board and a support network of 53 organizations. Site Ryerson is empowering. We are educating and inspiring the generations of today and tomorrow. Whether you're a young entrepreneur with a new cutting-edge idea, or a family in Telawana, Egypt, a digital media startup that is advancing Canadian innovation, or an angel looking to make an ethical decision, or a clean tech firm creating a greener economy, or a teenage mother struggling to make ends meet, or a high school student looking to make a difference. Sacrifice turns your ideas into reality. reality. Um, 
by allowing them to come to the students and the innovators within the zone with industry issues and allowing them to collaborate and work on these innovative solutions together, they'll be able to set their own price and charge industry for it as well. somehow work your way into uh, an equity position, like a nerd equity position through your efforts. And the other question was on the food program, whether, whether you thought to expand that to uh, educating uh, mothers, parents, uh, and adolescents on you know, the avoidance of junk food and that sort of thing. I'm um, sorry, could I actually repeat the first part of your question again? <coughs> Just whether you had any thought to trading your efforts and your advice for equity in some of the corporations or companies that are starting? Um, within the, uh, in terms of the, the first part about the equity uh, within the companies, uh, it, we're not really looking to take apart the business. Um, and be, and for that few reason being because we're, we're here to support the entrepreneurs. So whether they're, they succeed or whether they fail, it is a university environment, it is an educational environment. And so by providing, through the Start Me A program, the resources to help them succeed or fail, it's, uh, it, it, in the end of it, they'll have emerged, having learned from the experience and then being able to move on. Addressing the second part of the question, in terms of the nutrition aspect, through Start Smart, integrating into a wide variety of audiences, and our ability to expand throughout our campus, attracting nutrition students and members from early childhood education and child and youth care, we're gonna be developing and adding to our knowledge bank in terms of nutrition and healthy foods um, activities and spreading it throughout our programs as well. I have a question about the Start Me Up program. Um, when you decided to take it outside of Canada, how did you determine, was it Egypt? And, um, and have you taken it to any other countries? So we got approached by a staff member in our entrepreneurship faculty who goes to uh, countries around the world every year and this year he needed some help and he knew Start Me Up was a fantastic program to help entrepreneurs. So he approached us, um, he had family in Egypt and we helped him with the resources, with the funding, with uh, the actual model of how they should build a barn. So that's how we received that connection. Um, for other, expanding to other countries, um, we also do build college in the United States and adopted our program, but uh, in order to, we are looking to expand every year because our faculty, um, our staff and our faculty actually goes every year to a different country. So uh, next year we're actually looking to go to a different country and help another family out. In the area of green uh, challenge you have, uh, blackberries and uh, sustainability tools, tell me a little bit more about that and how it's received by, uh, by blackberry. I think that's a great, tell me more. Well, the, uh, the BlackBerry Challenge was actually an initiative that we, we approached RIM with. Uh, we had a direct connection with the Director of Corporate Social Responsibility, and it was the idea of turning uh, in line with RIM's products and their initiative in terms of going out and helping the environment. This seemed like the perfect opportunity to do so, especially with BlackBerry releasing their new uh, software development toolkit in the coming future. And so we, when we started it off, uh, we, we wanted people to actually develop the real application and submit it to us for review, but what we found was it's really hard to develop a, a BlackBerry application as opposed to an iPhone application. So when we went back to RIM, we actually merged with, it would be a, become a concept um, a competition. So how it emerged is, is we had 23 applicants spanning five countries who submitted uh, ideas, full um, prototypes, with, complete with pictures and how they would work, on how the application would be developed. In just one week, we'll be announcing the winner, uh, and RIM will be providing the, the resources necessary to which includes our engineers and coding support to actually build the application. Team, your time has expired. Judges and guests, please help me in thanking the team from Ryerson University. Ryerson! Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to take a five minute break. Judges, by my clock, it is now 3.40, so please be back in your seats by 3.45. Oh, what the heck, make it 346. <laughs>
Project is awesome. Oh, yeah. Ace provides so many tremendous opportunities, whether it's project management, people management, you know, being able to present to a group of CEOs and as well as relevant people in the world. Yeah. Come here, Ashley. <laughs> Jonathan, good job. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Do you have a spare copy of your annual report by any chance? Tracy, yeah. We don't have any more. Our project manager is not here. Come back to us a little bit later, or? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Making but fabulous job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John, did, did he get the annual report? Hey! Congratulations! Oh, we just finished. I'm sure you can do the same thing. Ah, yay! <laughs> Nothing we can do now, just cross your fingers and hope and wait. What is this? Guys, let's all move outside. Let's all move your awesome job. Look at this. My camera. Uh, let's just see what we can do. I can have a talk in front of large audiences. I can have motivated projects. So I can do all these different things that without the age program. I never had the opportunity. Champions! Ahem! Lexi! Hi! Congratulations! Thank you! Where's that other camera? Awesome! Oh my god, that one line fucking over. You did so well, shut the fuck up! You don't get to talk anymore. You've already talked for 24 minutes. Hey! Please it! Not sure I'm going to have to do like this place to close that. Absolutely not. So dark. So wait a minute. I don't want to ever have to say Turning ideas into the <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Congratulations! Congratulations! Come here! Come here! Oh, that's oh, amazing, that's amazing Q&A. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. 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 I don't know, I, I actually really like it. Let's see, do the dance again. No! Whoa! Look at all of them! Ah, thank you. Hey, who are we? <laughs> Okay, well, that, that was that was a fail. Hey, you guys want to do a team yeah. cheer for the camera? Put in our video. Wait, wait, let me move back. Let me move back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, everyone, we're gonna try and start as soon as possible. So if you're if you're sitting, if you're staying, sit down, please. Actually better the second time I think. Now after yeah. it was good. Like, our yeah. presentation. Yeah. And now we are waiting. It's so next to well, after that ending video ended mm -hmm. the whole place mm -hmm. I was like, I was a little nervous because when it first started the video didn't look fast that you guys were talking. Because we we we, we, we got so mad at the TV guys, we were like, turn your fucking volume. <laughs> we never hear it in the tech check, we never heard it, turn it up. And he was like, your, your laptop's a little It's like, man, I know how loud these things can go. Just turn it up the volume. And then we started the video and we were like, yeah. I think it was a, I, 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 cause I knew we were like, so I went really fast. I know, we, like me and Ro, <laughs> me and Ro, <laughs> and I think Andrea and Ro, I tried to go I first. I was so afraid that you guys were going to be so scared. Did we catch up? We almost ran out of time? We were like 3.3 million dollars and then one of the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were a little behind. 
We got excited. Yeah, that's the very excited. Just finished, and uh, now it's just a matter of waiting for the actual results. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I can wait for you. Can we tell everybody? Goes to Nick Tingley.